What's going on everybody, Mortem here, this time bringing you a discussion-oriented video around the rising prices in the video game sphere, specifically how AAA games in the US here have started charging roughly $70 US, and of course whatever that amounts to regionally elsewhere, and how I think that price increase is leading to a lose-lose situation for everyone involved. So with that in mind, feel free to just listen to this one. I will have some uh, gameplay in the background of some recently released 7 $70 games that I think are relevant to the discussion, but nothing that you really need to watch. So right at the beginning of this video, I think it's important to acknowledge a few different things. For starters, not everyone values video games the same way. To some people, $70 for a game is nothing. To others, they wouldn't pay that, period. And beyond just the general reaction to the price, it goes even farther than that, down to specific aspects of a game someone values in comparison to everyone else. So what $70 means to one one person for one reason or another is different from the next person in line, etc. And while that's common sense, I still want to highlight that here at the beginning. I personally think the $70 price point is really hurting video games overall, as rising prices come with rising expectations that, quite frankly, developers are not hitting, thus leading to a lot of backlash, which is what prompted this video, because I wanted to talk about it a little bit more in depth, because I think it's a bit of a prickly subject pretty much any way you slice it. For starters, prices are rising because prices for basically everything are rising right now, and there's an argument to be made about how AAA price for video games has been $60 for an incredibly long time, even in the face of inflation. However, I think that argument also comes up against the fact that these days they are selling these games digitally at scale in potentially the tens of millions, with many games not even receiving a physical release anymore. And just to give a recent sales figure, Hogwarts Legacy, which released earlier this year has sold over 15 million copies and made like a billion dollars in sales. And in that case, the base game is actually 60 bucks with the deluxe version being 70. However, that of course disregards the costs that go into making that game. And when you're talking that kind of money, AAA games become a very high risk, high reward scenario, which makes the price increase not completely surprising, but also not explicitly required either. As again, something like Hogwarts Legacy shows you just in terms of raw sales numbers. When you start bumping up the cost of these games in comparison to what has traditionally been the case, expectations increase in terms of expected quality. Because when you buy a product for pretty much anything, the baseline expectation of a consumer is that that product should do the thing it is advertised to do, which in the case of a video game is to actually run on the hardware it is being sold on. And I want to make it clear, that's an incredibly reasonable expectation. That is is literally the baseline. However, in very recent memory, many games are launching in a state that is anything but working order. Particular sets of hardware tend to be the issue here, either a specific console or PC in general. PC is usually in the worst state. But the reason PC usually has the most problems is the sheer amount of hardware available. It's pretty common knowledge that optimizing games for PC is more difficult because there is a nearly infinite amount of hardware configuration someone might have, which means there simply is no catch-all solution on PC for video games. Because no matter how good of a job a developer does, here, there's always going to be a fringe case of a specific hardware configuration that might have some weird problem that no one else really even sees, but to that person, that game does not work. And if said person paid $70, now they're very upset that they paid an increased price for a game that is functionally in a worse state than something they might have paid $60 for previously. Which then leads to a bit of a vicious cycle where developers are under increased pressure with increased expectations due to the rising cost of these games, which again is a very reasonable expectation on the part of the consumer, but the developer here is almost certainly going to fail, especially when it comes to PC, because there is simply so much room for error that there simply is no catch-all solution. And that situation altogether, I think, is why the $70 price point is an incredibly difficult sell. Because just on a performance level, developers aren't going to be able to optimize any game that releases on more than one hardware configuration to a point where it will work 100% of the time. That game will not work for someone, almost guaranteed. And that's before we even dip into the mechanical side of things where the rest of the game has to be working, not just the ability to get it running. Are the mechanics 
mechanics of said game engaging. Up to this point in the video, I've just mentioned how well a game runs, but that's really only part of the battle when it comes to video games, because then you get into the context of what a game actually adds to the space, because we live in a time where video games are honestly kind of a dime a dozen. In fact, in terms of pure value, the indie scene is usually the way to go, because those games are much cheaper, typically offer more innovation, even if it is very focused on a specific thing, whereas AAA titles tend to be much of the same, slightly reskinned, which is usually because at that level they're not really willing to take a lot of risks, if only because of the sheer amount of money involved. And this is a situation that goes round and round upon itself, but it is especially prevalent right now where we've seen basically just AAA release after AAA release this year fail on some level. In the case of Jedi Survivor recently, the game is pretty great, but the performance was terrible out of the gate. And right now, at the time of this video, that game is still sitting on mixed Steam reviews because of its poor performance. But then, even more recently, we have Redfall, which is a game that runs well for most people, though still certainly has issues in that regard as well, but also lets a lot of people down in terms of its game mechanics. So with those things in mind, you can start seeing how easy it is for a consumer to simply be like, these things are not worth the price you are asking for. So you have all of these factors that are consistently making the idea of a $70 game incredibly hard to stomach, and it's making that needle almost impossible for a developer to thread at the same time. But at the end of the video here, I would like to point out that everything I just talked about, everything I mentioned, is pretty much meaningless if people continue paying the $70. At the end of the day, in terms of a corporate perspective, if that price point is profitable, then they simply do not care. Money talks, as they say, and if that price point is making them money, then they will continue to push that price point until it eventually, over time, becomes the norm. Because while I stand by everything I just said, if these games are still making their sales expectations and, again, turning a profit despite their negative initial reception, then they will absolutely continue to push these increased prices. Which, if I'm being completely honest, is exactly what I expect to happen. And in the short term, it's just unfortunately not something I really see much of a solution to, because the industry has kind of backed itself into a corner in terms of both expectations as well as their ability to deliver. And to their credit, it's an incredibly difficult thing to deliver on. There's a lot of nuance to literally any game release at all, especially at the pretty much literal highest tier of said video game releases. Overall, though, I would say my personal opinion on this matter is that at $70, the gaming industry is setting themselves up for failure, at least in terms of public reception. While some of these games almost certainly might make money, etc., and I'm sure plenty of them have, honestly, developers, by raising these prices, are thus raising expectations about the quality of said releases that they so far have proven themselves frankly unable to deliver on. And in an industry that is already ripe with things like microtransactions and further monetization besides just the base price, I think that is unfortunate to see. Now, ultimately though, time will tell on all of this. As always, I'm along for the ride, happy to see where it goes, as so long as video games are getting made, I'm going to keep playing and reviewing them. But I think that is pretty much everything I've got to say on the subject. I would be happy to hear your thoughts down in the comment section below, so by all means, like, comment, subscribe, all that YouTube jazz, but regardless of any of that, truly, just thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. May you wander in wisdom and have an amazing day.